dealing with severe weather is just par for the course when you live in Nebraska. You can always count on a hailstorm or two, and this year was no different. Market Journal's Maddie McIntosh spoke with Nebraska Extension's Dr. Justin McMechan to learn how producers can help their fields recover from hail damage. Whether it's herbicides for weeds, pesticides for insects, or fungicide for disease, there are many ways a producer can prevent damage to their crops. But when it comes to Mother Nature, prevention is not an option. That's why Nebraska Extension's Justin McMechan researches hail and its effects on crops so producers can be better advised on what to do after the storm. So the machine uh, behind me is actually one that was built off of one in 1986 uh, by Dale Flowerday, who recently passed away. Uh, but Dale produced a machine that was uh, good for demonstration purposes and got the initial work on hail uh, that really needed to be done. This machine is uh, a scale up from that. Mike Kosher uh, helped build this machine, and so we were able to dial between 60 mile per hour winds and 170, which is a class five hurricane. We don't have a lot of those in Nebraska, but uh, you know you, we could pick any speed we wanted to within that. Uh, and then it has the ability to monitor all those functions as we use the machine. So recording wind speed, recording uh, all kinds of ice flow rate, uh, things that allow repeatability to occur. You see a lot of variation in hail damage. That's the reality of, of a real scenario. And in particular for reproductive stage corn, the damage to those ears associated with hail. Uh, so it just gives, uh, our clientele and opportunity to see what is as close to a real situation as possible. And, and biggest thing, take out the shock and awe that happens with hail, right? It's, it's kind of like, I've lost my entire crop. Uh, not necessarily. When it's time for an insurance claims adjuster to visit the damaged fields, Justin says there are key things they look for to determine how much is actually lost and a few things growers can spot for themselves. Yeah, they're, they're going to be looking at plant stand, viable plant stand that's out there. They'll do that far into the reproductive stages of soybeans. The, the charts that they're using will, will differ and the, the production loss will differ because of that. Uh, leaf defoliation, uh, that happens in every hail uh, scenario we get. Uh, then they'll be looking at how many nodes are cut off on that plant uh, and are remaining relative to what should have been there. Uh, and then they'll also be looking at how many leaves are lost on that plant. Some complicating things that might frustrate growers is the amount of stem damage, and you can see that today there's a lot of stem damage, even on the old hail that we uh, did a couple weeks ago. Uh, and for growers, that can be frustrating because it's how, you know, is that plant going to have standability uh, later? Uh, but, uh, you know, in some cases, an adjuster might defer the evaluation if they're fearful the crop may lodge as a result of the hail injury that occurred. While replanting may be an option earlier in the season, it's not viable in the late season. Justin says the best thing to do is business as usual. Yeah, late season, we're obviously out of the chance to do any replants on anything like that. So they're looking at managing an existing crop that's been hailed. Uh, part of the, that management will exist on what's the yield potential that's left. Uh, you know, maybe I was planning on putting on a fungicide, my crop yield's been reduced, other things like that. Uh, may, may want to, to tone down some of those decisions because we may not have as much productivity left in that field. Uh, but it really becomes a, about maintaining that crop. And the National Crop Insurance Service requires you to maintain the crop unless it's completely written off. Uh, and so they'll, they'll ask you to keep doing the same management or, or at least uh, consistent management practices uh, to, to maintain that crop. The, the biggest thing is weight. Uh, if you rush out and try and make decisions, especially early season when there's a lot of potential, uh, you can spend a lot of money when there was still a crop there that would have performed fairly well. That's a hard thing for a grower to hear when, when the replant takes time, money, they've got to source it, um, and every day they wait, the yield production of the replant decreases because of the date of planting. Uh, but I guarantee them it's going to pay off to wait and, and make a true assessment on that crop. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Maddie McIntosh. We've got a link to more of Justin's research and ways to learn more about hail damaged crops. That's on the Market Journal website.